All right, uh, so our second company is Pillar Technologies. Presenting for Pillar are CEO Alex Schwarzkopf and CTO Matt Joyle. Take it away, guys. Thanks. Check, check. Hello, everybody. Thanks for coming. Uh, we're Pillar Technologies. We're going to switch gears real quick. We're going to talk to you about the commercial construction site today. So we're from New York City. How many people have been to London here? Oh, good amount. Anybody recognize this place? Anyone been to Dubai? Awesome. Uh, more than the last group. But they all started as holes in the ground, which makes the construction process an incredibly unpredictable environment. If you ask any contractor, they're going to tell you a story about a water leak. Temperatures drop, pipes burst, happens all the time. Another common story, mold growth. Mold can grow within 48 hours given the right conditions. That means you go home on a Friday, you come back on a Monday, and you got black stuff all over the wall, you got to rip it out, delays the schedule, costs millions of dollars. Finally, you never, <laughs> ever want this to happen. Funny enough, or not so funny, fire damage represents 30% of all the damage that the insurance industry paid out last year for commercial job sites. But there's currently no active fire monitoring solution for most job sites today. And that's why we built Pillar Technologies. Pillar is the first real-time, end-to-end environmental monitoring solution designed specifically for the job site. So we do a few things with Pillar. First, we do active warning and damage mitigation for those I, I mentioned before. Two, the data is actually usable for logistics, so we can help contractors better place equipment and better manage personnel exposure to potentially harmful conditions. And three, now your building has a Carfax. All that data is stored and passed on, so when you buy that skyscraper, you know how it was built. So that's how we're changing the industry. Right now, we're going to walk through a couple of the different mounting methods. So we deploy smart sensor networks on job sites. Uh, there's multiple mounting methods built in here. This took two years to figure out, I know. Took a while. So we have magnets on the back here, so it sticks to any ferrous surface. Um, we have a hanging strap here, so when the room is almost finished, you can put a screw in the wall, and it just sits right there. And then finally, if you have a pipe or a 2 by 4 you can just wrap it around. It makes it incredibly easy to move in a very dynamic construction environment. So I'll walk you through how we do a typical site deployment. We digest the building floor plan, which you can see back here. We place sensor locations. This one's actually the TechCrunch stage, and that little blue dot is the sensors we have up here. And then we, this is basically a risk audit, if you will. And so from that information, a box shows up. We deploy the sensors at the token locations that we positioned previously, and the system is live. All the alerts and notifications go to our main dashboard. And this is where contractors can view and report on dam potentially damaging conditions. Finally, this is what they're going to there we go. This is what they're going to see when events do happen. But they don't have to use our dashboard. In fact, one of the biggest pieces of feedback we got was contractors don't want to learn a new piece of software. So that's why we push notifications directly to the smartphone. If you could queue to the uh, smartphone, we got some notifications coming up. Queue phone. Perfect. Oh, there we go. So the humidity event we just simulated for here it's actually uh, typical in the south. Sometimes uh, buildings will come under specific humidity conditions. As I mentioned, mold growth happens in 48 hours. So right now, we're protecting the contractor in case of a mold issue over the weekend. Q, uh, PowerPoint, please. So last year, contractors and their insurance partners paid out about $12 billion in damages from these, most of which were preventable or mitigatable if they had a monitoring solution. Contractors competed this year for $1.16 trillion in new construction across the public and private sector in the United States. So this is a massive opportunity to basically bring new technology into a very entrenched industry. So how many people have rented an apartment? Pretty much everybody or bought a house. We charge the same way that you got charged, per square foot. So we charge three cents per square foot per month. So, excuse me, three cents per square foot one-time installation fee, and two cents per square foot per month, everything included. So it's almost hardware and software as a service. We're bundling hardware, firmware, software, and data analytics into one easy package 
makes it incredibly easy to quote and incredibly easy to transfer the uh, relationship and the experience to the contractor. Finally, my team and I have been working together for about five years. We have uh, experience across the EV, the defense, and the uh, consumer electronics spaces. And we really think we're onto something, and we're going to change the way buildings are built. Less time, less money, and with a quality never before seen. You can follow along with us at Pillar, uh, Pillar Tech Inc. and online at pillar.tech. Let's talk about how we're building the future. Thank you. Right. Who has the first question? I have one. Oh, yeah. So uh, I'd love to know what the density of those items you need in order to get an accurate read. In other words, does it interfere with my workspace, my construction space? How frequently do you have to post these things? That's a good question. Um, so right now, the average square footage we cover is about 2,000 square feet per box, per sensor. Um, if we look at the industry, though, in healthcare, we want to get a little bit higher coverage. It's actually because healthcare has more strict building requirements, and we can get a much higher uh, granularity of the data if we, if we basically reduce the square footage size. But as a rule of thumb, about 2,000. Now, you, you said that you need to um, do the installation, but you also said that you made them so easy to install, so why can't I just take it and install it myself? Yeah, great question. Right now, we do the installation ourselves because um, it's actually a quality of service thing. The technology is so new that we actually have to educate contractors how to have a good experience with it, and so we're controlling it in that way. So for the next six months, um, we're working with uh, six of the largest contractors in the United States. We're deploying on about 10 job sites um, in the Northeast region, and we're doing those deployments ourselves, and we're charging an installation fee. In the future, we're actually designing in the usability now so that a box can literally show up on the job site and everything is pre-programmed in the back end where all those tokens I mentioned are placed. And so they can place them themselves. Will, will you stick to the subscription model? Yes. Yeah, the subscription model's here to stay. <laughs> Installation can go, but the subscription stays. Yeah, exactly. How are you uh, tackling marketing and scale? How, how do you intend to scale this? It's a good question. So the industry is heavily consolidated. So the top 50 GCs control the vast majority of the construction revenue that was generated this year. Um, one of the interesting things about the construction industry is uh, they deploy like local pilots that other regional offices observe, and they all get to understand the value across their different sectors. So for example, one of our customers said, if this works out well for us in the Northeast, we'll deploy on 15 regions in the Northeast, and then we're actually going to move you out into our national, more nationally based uh, branches. And what, just a follow-up question, sure. what is your sales pitch to the contractor? How are, how are you showing him the savings uh, that he gets from your device? Yeah, so that's, um, let me answer that in two ways. First, with our pilot program that we conducted last year, uh, we had a nine times ROI on the, uh, the cost versus the, the cost savings for the system. Um, the other interesting thing is that the construction market is incredibly competitive. And so 70% of the, the business that these large companies do is actually repeat. It's actually customers coming back to them because they had such a good experience. Um, so one of the ways that we're saying is, hey, if you want to maintain a competitive advantage, this technology is coming. You get first access to it, and you can actually use that to share that with the owner and say, hey, look, we're taking steps above and beyond. OK, going back to the subscription models, um, what study have you done to say that that is the right price? Because it seems cheap. It seems yeah. like you're underselling yourself. It's a good question. We're still, we're still discovering, to be quite honest with you. This is the only product we've found that do, does exactly what we do. Um, in the, in the, for the first you know, six months, I'd say, we were pricing under, uh, basically underperforming. Um, I, it could fluctuate. Um, right now, technology's new, so we want to kind of keep the adoption. What, one more thing. This feels sturdy. Can yeah. I drop it? Yeah, you can throw it. Throw it over there, though. Good nice to go, shot. Huh? Yeah. yeah was I was really worried that you were going to injure one of our audience. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Have you thought about... Okay. Uh, no, no, I, I was just going to question battery life um, and how often you have to replace and then the network capabilities that are required. Take it away. Yes, yeah, so we built this. We built the product in mind of this. Uh, battery should last two years, so you don't have to worry about uh, recharging it. And it's set up such that uh, calibration, everything will last you that two years. Uh, so once you place it there, you can just set it and forget it. You don't have to worry about it. Um, it's ready to go. 
So what, what, what are you sensing? What are you sensing in addition to humidity? Yeah, so we're looking at seven different metrics specifically. So temperature, humidity, dust particulate, as well as air pressure, vibration, noise level, and VOCs. Can you detect mold? Yes, uh, we, can, can, we can detect the conditions in which mold can start growing. Uh, we're not counting uh, spore count. Correct. But yeah. Um, one other question. Have you thought about working with insurance companies to try to get the builders and contractors to get a lower rate for their insurance on their developing buildings? Yes. So one of the reasons we priced so low is actually to get market share. Because what the insurance providers want to see is a robust data set that's able to support a lower premium. In the future, this is exciting because we're actually starting to do dynamic risk uh, mitigation and prevention, which then directly affects their book of business and their liability or exposure. So ultimately, what we feel is we can create a synergistic relationship between the contractor and their insurance provider in a win-win situation. Any final questions? And, and sorry, just right. follow up. We're, we're currently speaking with three very large commercial insurers. <laughs> All right, well, I think that's it. So give it up one more time for Pillar Technologies. Thank you. Okay, we are going to bring up our third company. Um, judges, what did you think of Pillar? Did you change construction? Another very innovative use of sensor technology. And uh, I'm, I'm sensing that theme. Uh, everything at CES, uh, the Internet of Things is truly coming. And the sensor technology, the networking capabilities, it all ties together. So it's an interesting application. It was sort of funny because I was writing the post announcing the finalists, and the, the word that I had to change a bunch of times was just the word tracks, 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 tracks. So you'll, it'll be a common theme. Um, well, I'm, I'm actually disappointed there's no robots or drones here, but <laughs> um, well, I'm building a house and I really wanted to take them home, but they took them away already. You can probably talk to them afterwards. Matt, what did you think? I think it's really interesting because it, you, you have all these construction sites, even single family homes. You have a developer come into a cornfield and build 200 units. And a fire early stage in that can devastate that entire investment. Michelle, impressed? I'm impressed. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sounds good.